Good day all. Ira Epstein with your agriculture update and this review is for Tuesday. This is December 31st, 2019 and about 1.55 in the afternoon. So before I go any further, I want to personally thank everyone out there that's a regular watcher or those of you new to our channel where you get to see reviews of the market, market analysis and so on. It's going to be an interesting year 2020. This will be my last uh, review for you obviously this year. 2020, remember, I'm going to introduce ETF videos. They'll primarily be subscriber videos that are there. So I start off your trading in ETFs in a way that at the end of every trade day, I'll have that out before I even leave the office. Stock market opens at 8.30. We'll cover it. You might say, well, in the ag up, why am I mentioning this? Well, there are ag sectors covered in ETFs. That's one of the reasons. Energy, which is important, ag, the ags themselves. There's many different areas. As you can see, energy's down a little bit today. A pretty quiet day in the grain market. The stock market's got three of the four indices lower. Metals, well, the copper market's the one that got hit. Most of the other metals were up today. And the dollar index is going to finish out the year, believe it or not, up a quarter of a percent for the year. It's one of the smallest gains or losses that is on record in the past 30, 40 years. So now the question is, what next for the dollar? What we cannot argue is this year that the dollar strength hurt or helped commodities. A 0.24% is what Reuters just said it's up for the year. That's pretty interesting. The president today made an announcement that on January 15th, phase one of the U.S.-Chinese trade deal will be signed. The bean market, it gained a little bit. It's up for the week 13 and a half points, as you can see. And we're back into this area of the old highs. And one of the things to remember is for the farm base for the president, this is where you were at the beginning of 2019. You're actually higher. And yes, the market came down from in the 930s all the way down near $8 and has come back dramatically to finish the year out if we take a look at it. And maybe we should. Maybe we should just see where this market was at uh, the end of December. And we can get there pretty fast right through here. Remember, I'm, I'm now getting you to the end of December, January, and this is a weekly chart, so that's what I'm trying to do, get you right there. Here we go. This is where the market finished, 882 and three quarters on December 28th. And after that, as you can see, the market went down. Obviously, we had some trade problems, and there is the crash. And what it has done since it cleared this 18-week moving average of closes as it played there, came back, and it has rallied into this latter part, and you'll see what I'm getting at, and this is where you're finishing. So compared to where we were, 60 cents higher on this particular weekly chart than where the year began. You wouldn't believe that because all we heard was how much grain prices had fallen. Now, every locale in grains is a little different, and I, I know you realize that. There's called a basis, and you look to see what the local area is to the futures board and so on. But it gives you an idea as to what's going on. Since December is when the savior came in. This market was 880 at the beginning of this month. It has rallied 75 cents. That's a heck of a rally, and it is in part because word was that the trade deal was going to happen, and if you think that isn't built into prices, I'll let you come to your own decision. But for me, there is that factor, like I saw copper down today when they said that they've got the signing date signed. I just wonder how much higher this goes. Let me tell you why they say this is going higher unlike the copper. Because if the trade deal does force China in some manner to buy more soybeans, that's what this market is counting on. All that the copper market's looking at is you're taking pressure off world trade, and that's why it gave up a little. So there is a difference in the fundamentals there. The problem for you, for me, none of us know what's in the trade deal yet, and that is problematic at this point. But as a chartist, I see an uptrend. It's got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You had a bullish crossover, and I pointed that out when I got back from my vacation. It happened on Friday. This past Friday, we're only three days later now, you know, four days uh, in calendar days, and the market is managed to run with that ever since then. The last challenge was at the 
early part of December of that 18 week average, uh, rather 18 day average, and the market never looked back. Once it cleared this high right through here, that 915 area, it just kept going. In terms of resistance, well, the Bollinger Band, which is this black dashed line, it's made up with that one and this one. First, they're not parallel. Second, the first challenge of it is often met with heavy resistance in the marketplace. So that's way up here in the 964 area. Momentum-wise is what I hang my head on sometimes, and the momentum of the slow stochastic, which is a momentum oscillator that normally travels between an 80 and 20 level, and that's why I've got them knocked off, whereas the traditional traders will look at anything that gets up over 80 is overbought, and the traditionalists will look at anything under 20 is oversold. I also embed. Embed means I convert from overbought to locking in a trend. And that happens when the two numbers, called a K and a D line, the red and the blue, get over 80 for several days in a row or more. It's in my charting course and I go over it in detail. When it locks in like this, it's often accompanied by higher prices in the market. And as those higher prices keep going away, you are. Now, a warning sign is often momentum leads price. I use the word often. I wish I could say it's always. Sometimes it lags. Other times it's right with it. Most of the time, it forecasts what the momentum is going to be. That's the idea of it. And until this red line that is made up here gets back under 80, this market is still saying that on pullbacks, it's still being well supported. In terms of the meal market, I want you to take a look at what the market did. Coming back to Friday, you came down, challenged the 18-day average. You see that right here. Yesterday, you rallied up to that number. Now, if that market's going to rally more and this doesn't hold the market, the next area of resistance is the 100-day. You went up, slid through it, and closed right in between the two. In the process, you did not take out any of the higher highs. So what you have is a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, countered by the fact that today you had to close over the 18-day average, which means the bias is up. When you have the trend down, the bias up, the two counter each other. You have nothing. And in terms of momentum, what had been pointing down is now flattened itself out. Market sort of waiting to see what's going to be next. No one has control of the market. In the soy oil, we saw profit taking come in today. Have we turned the slow stochastic trend down? No, because this red number is not under 80. So maybe there was some profit taking of those long oil short the meal and they took some money off the table. I couldn't tell you. It's the end of the year. A lot of books closed today, and people start coming back into the market. You know, I'll say Thursday and Friday, but next week is where it gets much more normal. In the corn market, what had been resistance on the way up, and that's the green line here, you can see the 100-day average. Once the market tried to break out of this sideways zone, and we can come here to just look at this, this is called when the slow stochastics start going sideways, and that's because price is losing volatility. Now, the first challenge is often met with resistance. If not, I look to see is there a key moving average, which there is right here. That should be a resistance point. But what is the market trying to do? Trying to move to the upside. We don't have a trend at this point. You had a lower and low and a higher high, and this was December 19th. Now you're riding that 100-day average, that green line, as you can see. And even coming into today, that's pretty much what you're doing. The trend is up because you have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Momentum is still embedded. So the bulls are still in control of the market. They're having trouble at the 100-day average. If it gives ground, the 18 is the next key number. Now, if the red line gets under 80, the odds favor that 18-day average will be in the, in the attack zone for those in the market. In the wheat market, we have a pattern where the market is overbought. You have a lower low on the swing line, a higher high. You've hit the resistance. The bias is up since you're over the red line, the 18-day average of closes, and you're overbought. Now, there's going to be less wheat acres planted this year, and I'm talking 2020. However, the acres that are planted are the best producing acres. So will the crop be smaller? That's what the world's going to be waiting. I also have no idea what the U.S. trade deal is going to put on pressure on or off the wheat market. 
in the sugar market, all we've done, and I said it yesterday, if you watched yesterday's video, I kept saying that when we lost the embedded reading back here, right in this time frame, I was looking then and there for prices to fall back to the 18-day average. They didn't. Instead, they've drifted around in an overbought condition, but that number is still, and I'll use this IOU word, it's owed to the market. And what the market did today is it finally went to it. I'm going to call this market right now mixed. Let me explain it. You've got the higher lows. If we look at this high right here, it's 1360 is the high. The high prior to that was 1362. So I've developed, or the, rather the chart has developed, a pattern of lower highs, higher lows, went back to the neutral number, momentum is trying to point down, and the settlement at 1342 is over the 18-day average, a confusing market. Not surprising on the last trading day of 20. 19. In the coffee market, this market has been fighting, and I've been saying it, at this 18-day average of closes. I think yesterday I said a week and a half. You tried an early morning breakout. Miserable attempt. Came right back down, settled 245 points lower. The market is not trending. I don't know how to say it any clearer. Cotton, I'm sorry, cocoa market is in an uptrend. It's got interesting action. This is yesterday. We had the swing line up, higher lows, higher highs, bias down, and momentum oversold. That's where you're at. But you had lost, and you can see here, an embedded reading. Embedded's when both the red and the low, uh, green, the red and the green, the red and the blue are going sideways under 20. Come on, Ira. The market lost that. It owes the 18-day average of closes. It got pretty darn close here. Uh, the high is 25.16, 25.20 is it. I don't split hairs. That's close enough for me. But to make the measure good, it went to it today, and then the market decided to pull back. Okay, it did not finish the day at, at 25.40, in bad shop though. You've got higher lows, higher highs, you're over the 18-day average. The bulls grab control of the market today. Momentum up, bias up. If the market wants to run, maybe this is the number that it's got as a resistance point, support back at 25.14. The cotton market is still one of the markets I'm looking at that how could a trade deal not involve cotton? I'm trying to just figure that out. I think it has to in some manner, be it the t-shirts, be it whatever cotton's used for in so many different things. But I keep looking at the market and it's been acting good. You had a key reversal today. Now, what's the difference between an outside day down and a key reversal? A key reversal occurs when a market's made the highest high of a move, and then it has the outside move with it. In other words, an outside day down. So we're in an uptrend that had an outside day down. Do I put a lot of importance in it? I do, for those of you that use window envelopes, and I don't show this here, I show it in my charting course, and I don't if you have an embedded slow stochastic at work. So the answer is, I still think there's an uptrend at the market met profit taking today. In the cattle market, I'd like to say I was surprised by today's action, but those of you that get my newsletter know I'm not. And I've been looking for this pullback, and now the market's neutralized itself, got back today to the 18-day average, tried to hold it, finished 125.92. The uptrend sink that we had here ended around the 27th or so of December, and I'm talking the historical tendency of this market to rally in early December up to that time frame, and you're seeing some profit taking off of that. Now we wait and see what's next. What's the most important thing to me on the chart? Any idea? The sideways action that we're getting right here. The longer you look at that, Bollinger Band, and you see how prices are winding up. Out of here comes a big move. The longer a market goes overall sideways, the bigger the eventual move. In the feeder cattle, to a degree, you've got this sideways action. It's seen much easier in the live. This pattern's got lower highs, higher lows. I don't see a trend. The market today fought again at the 18-day average. That's been the support zone for a number of times. Momentum is turning down. If the market gets under 143.27, you will likely turn the trend then down because you'll have lower highs, then lower lows under that number. 
key is will, the key will be staying under it. If you do, then the lower Bollinger Band comes into play. What do the bulls have to do? They don't want to get under that and they want to clear this 145.45 to get the market challenging the upper band again. Last in the hog market, I've been disappointed with pork for a long time. Unlike beans, which made a phenomenal comeback, we just talked about that, this market's just sort of drifting, going nowhere. We know that the Chinese need pork, but they don't need the Feb. <laughs> it's going to be later months if they take our hog exports. I think they will at the end of the day. They'll take full carcasses. But I haven't seen the trade deal. I need to see it. In the meantime, there's a sneaky thing going on. If you look at the embedded or the slow stochastic, it's embedding. You've got the number staying over 80. So as long as they're doing that until this red line closes back under 80, the sneaky part is I wouldn't be surprised that uh, we come back Thursday to see pros buying this market, trying to again challenge this upper area right here. You know, I talk a lot of technical jargon, and we have volumes one and two from our good friends at Modern Trader. And it explains so many of the different parts that I'm talking about. In our futures trading kit, by the way, we have all this. But if you'd like to receive these, it's a free offering from us. It covers all these different parts of the market. And I'd like to say I've had a hand in a lot of these things because after 50 years, come on, I've probably known the best GAN traders in that 50-year period, certainly Fibonacci, the Prectors, and so on. I can go on and on with the people over the years that I've interviewed on my TV shows. And yeah, I've had TV shows all over the country that I've interviewed some of the best analysts, the greatest uh, that you can imagine. And now the question is, trying to teach this to people like you. Well, these guide to technical indicators help. They're each about 20 pages, full color. We made them in the PDFs. How do you get them? You can call my staff. They'll send them out to you instantly, They'll come to you via email, or you can go to our website. You can sign up on our free offers area, and we'll be happy to send it that way. Remember, a lot of this is in our futures trading guide. In the meantime, have a happy new year. I will see you all Thursday.